Hi, this is week three, video number three. In this video, we're going to go over the references list in APA format. I do need to give you a bit of a warning. I expect this will be a longer video because we have a lot of information to go through. Um, so just make sure that you have enough time, okay, to be able to get through this video in one sitting. My other warning is that what we're going to do is very dry. Um, so it's not exciting at all, um, but it is very, very necessary. You're also going to need some scrap paper and a pen, okay, or open up Word on your computer uh, because I am going to ask you to do some exercises as we're going through. Okay, so as I mentioned, in this particular video, we're actually going to talk about the references list. And I wanted just to give you a rundown of what the references list are. So the references list is the very last page of your paper or your assignment. And it lists out every single item that you've consulted as you're finishing your assignment or you're finishing your essay. So when you're writing an essay or any type of assignment in healthcare, you're going to be consulting outside material. So you're going to be looking at books and ebooks. You're going to be looking at journal articles. You may be looking at websites. There is a ton of different sources of information out there. And each source of information that you use will require an entry on the references list. Okay. The references list appears on a separate page. So it's its very own page in the paper. If you consult multiple resources, it may actually be multiple pages at the end of your paper. It still has the running head and the page number, and all entries go in alphabetical order. Okay? And again, just to reinforce, you need to have an entry for every single resource that you use as you're creating your assignment or your paper. So it means you have to keep track, okay, of all of the resources that you're using. Let's take a look. Let's go back to the template and take a look at what this looks like in real life. So in the fake paper, I've given you a fake references list so that you can see different entries and how they're set up. And I'm going to focus first on the formatting, and then we'll talk about the content. So your references page always starts off with the word references up at the top, capital R on references, the rest of it's in lowercase, and you'll notice, okay, that it's centered. Each of these items here, so you see where I'm placing the cursor. Each of these items here is a different resource that this person has consulted as they're writing the paper. They're, they contain different information, and we'll talk about the pattern for how you put these things together in a minute. But again, the first thing to notice is this is all in alphabetical order. Each entry is set up the reverse, okay, just, I guess just to make it difficult, the reverse of what you do in the body of the paper. So when you start an entry, you line it up to the left, and then the subsequent lines, so your second and any subsequent lines that you may have, are tabbed over in one. Okay, then I go on to my next one, lines up to the left, tabs in one. Next one, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Notice there's no numbering. Okay, there's nothing at all like that. It's completely plain. It's still in your Times New Roman 12 format, and it's still using the double spacing all the way through. Okay, so take a minute and just sort of look through the formatting. Take a look at this fake references list. Notice all of that stuff there. Okay, so each of the entries is listed. It's in alphabetical order. It follows the same formatting in terms of font and font size, but the difference is the first line is not indented and the second and any subsequent line is. I still have my running head up here at the top and I still have my page number, okay, over here at the side. Okay, so that's it in terms of formatting. Each of these items though looks a little bit different and they look a little bit different depending on what type of resource they are. 
So each resource has its own pattern or its own order of presenting information. I think this is what makes people freak out, okay? Because every single source of information that exists in the world has its own pattern for APA. Okay, so believe it or not, if you listen to a podcast, there's a specific way to cite that. If you go to a website, there's a specific way to reference that. If you look at a journal article, there's another pattern to follow. And when people initially get started with APA, that can be overwhelming because they think, oh my gosh, I have to learn, you know, hundreds of different patterns. Not true. You're going to be using the same types of resources over and over. So we're going to concentrate on books and ebooks, journal articles, and websites. Okay. But no, if you ever end up in a situation where you need to reference something weird, so say you listen to a podcast and use it as a resource, or you see a program on television or something like that, know that you can look it up. Okay. And I wanted to show you even before we get started, the best site that there is online to be able to get information about how to do these different references. And that's called the OWL Purdue, O-W-L, Purdue, P-U-R-D-U-E. And they have an excellent APA style site. It's put on by Purdue University. Um, and all of their information is correct, okay? There's lots of APA sites that are out there. A lot of them, unfortunately, make mistakes and don't give you the correct information. But the Purdue University site is excellent, okay? So again, for any exceptions, we're going to learn together how to do the main types. But for any exceptions, you can go to something like Purdue University, okay, and look it up. So say, for example, they have examples about what to do with audiovisual material, okay, film or video, TV series, YouTube video, music album, single song, podcast, okay, any exception is listed there for you. And it gives you an example of how to do the APA entry. And then you can just use that. But let me not get ahead of myself. Let's take a look at the basics. Okay, so we'll take a look at how to do ebooks and books, journal articles and websites. So I'm going to go back to PowerPoint here. And we're going to take a look first at books and ebooks and the pattern that you use to create a references entry for those. It's a very basic format. Okay, so this is what the format looks like. You put in the author's last name, followed by a comma, and then the author's initial or initials, okay? Even if you know the first name of the author, APA says only initials, okay? So it's considered an error if you put the full name in there, only initials, followed by a period, okay? Then you create a space, you open up a bracket, and you put in the year of publication of the book, you close the bracket, and then you put in a period. Again, only the year appears in the bracket. So even if you know the month that this particular book was published, you don't include it. You just include the year of publication. The next thing you put in is the title of the book. And this needs to be formatted a little carefully. First of all, it's in italics. It takes a capital letter on the first word of the title, and the rest of it is lowercase, unless you have a situation where you have what they call internal punctuation. Okay, so this title, the, the example I have down at the bottom, has a colon. So the next word after that internal punctuation is capitalized, or if I have a situation where I have what they call in grammar speak a proper noun. So the given name of a person, place, or thing. So if I had a book that was titled something like um, Cancer in Canada, I would put a big C on cancer because it's the first word of my title, but I'd also put a big C on Canada because it's a proper name, okay? After I put in the title, I have a period, 
another space, and then the name of the publisher followed by a period. Okay, that's it. You may get additional information about the book from the library website and see all sorts of extra information there. You don't include it. APA says only these elements, the author name, the year of publication, the title of the book, the name of the publisher. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. So this is a book written by somebody called M.W. George. George is the last name. So it's George, comma, M period space, W period space. Bracket, year of publication, close the bracket, period, space. Here is the title of the book, the elements of library research, what every student needs to know, period. And again, note the capitalization. Okay. Then the name of the publisher, Princeton University Press, period. Okay. That's an example of a book that's written by a single author. We'll take a look at what we do with additional authors in a couple of minutes. But that's your basic formatting for a book. What I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to give this a try. Okay. So pause the video and look at this information. Okay, so I found a book in the library catalog and I've included the information about the book on screen here. And I'm going to ask you from that information to create a references entry for that particular book. Then I'm going to get you to compare your answer against an answer coming up on, a, on, a, on the next screen. Okay, so take a minute. The name of the book is Labors of Love, Nursing Homes and the Structures of Care Work. The author is Jason Rodriguez. The publisher is New York University Press. I've included the ISBN number, that came up as well, and then the date, okay, 01-01-2014. So using that information, take your first step here with APA format and create a references entry. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you paused the video and you've given that a try. Now it's time to compare your answer. So take a look at what you've written for your references entry and compare it against what you see on the screen. Let's take a look at it and break it down. So I have the author's last name, Rodriguez, followed by a comma, and then J period, space, bracket, 2014, close the bracket, period. Here's the title of the book labors of love nursing homes and the structure of care work capital l on labors capital n on nursing period space and then the name of the publisher new york university press so congratulations you have just created your first entry for a book again if you had some problems working through that rewind the video and give it another try Okay, follow the format. All you're doing is plugging in variables according to the pattern. Okay, our next thing to look at are journal articles. And I'm going to warn you that these are more complicated. Okay, they take a lot more information than a book does. I actually have a little graphic for you on the screen that breaks down the pattern for a journal article. So let's take a look at this together. We start off with the author's last name, followed by a comma, and then the first initial, followed by a period, then a space. Then we have a bracket with the year of publication. And again, even if I know the month and the date or other information about it, APA says, no, nope, only the year goes in that bracket, okay? Then a period. The next thing I have coming is the article title. Okay, so remember, articles have titles and they're printed in journals, which also have their own title. We're looking at the title of the article. So this article was titled T, Hydration and Other Health Benefits. Take a look. You'll notice this is in plain print, so it's not in italics, it's just regular. You'll also notice, okay, the capitalization. So I put a capital on the first word of the article. I then have internal punctuation. 
So I put a capital after the punctuation, but everything else is all lowercase. Okay, so very important. Article titles are lowercase, except for first words, words after internal punctuation, or proper nouns. Okay, then I have a period and I have another space. The next thing I'm going to put in is the name of the journal that the article was published in. Okay, this takes some formatting rules as well. It's in italics all the way through, and you'll notice that it takes capital letters on every single word. So the journal this came from is from a journal titled Primary Healthcare. And again, you'll see capital P, capital H, capital C, all in italics. That identifies the name of the journal. Okay. Then I have a comma just to make things a little different, okay? Then I have a series of numbers. The first number that appears is the volume number, okay? And that was something I asked you to pull when we did the library searching. They asked you to find volume and issue numbers so you know where those are. But it's important to notice that your volume goes in italics. Then you open up a bracket and in the bracket, you put the issue number, but you don't put that in italics. Then you have a comma. Then you have the page range. So this article started on page 34 and concluded on page 42. I have a dash in between, okay, to show that it goes from 34 to 42. And then a period, okay? But you'll notice there's no P period or PG period or anything like that, just the numbers then a period. If I stop there, that means I don't have one of those DOI numbers. So remember the DOI number was like a UPC code for an article that you're looking at? Some of them have it, some of them don't. If I have a DOI, then I include the DOI right after the page range. If I don't have a DOI, I finish right there. Okay, so right at the end. All right, now I'm going to ask you to give it a try, okay? Remember, don't get frustrated. Journal articles are a little more complicated. They take a little more work, okay? But here's some information about an article, a real-life article that exists in a journal. The title of the article is How the Economics of Dental Assisting is Impacting Your Practice. The author is Joanne Dolly. The source, okay, so where it's coming from is the journal Dental Economics. It was published in April 2020. It's volume 110, issue 4, and it runs pages 12 to 14. It has three pages in total. It's an article, okay? Notice as well, there's no DOI, okay? Using this information and the pattern that you just learned, Try to create a references entry for the journal article just on a scrap piece of paper. So pause the video, go back, take a look at the pattern on the previous screen, take a look, okay, at the information that I'm providing you there about the article and give it a try. So I'll get you to pause now and then come back. Okay, so welcome back. Now it's time to compare your answer. Here's how your references entry should look. So you should have the last name Dolly, followed by a comma, then the initial J, period. One space, bracket, 2020, close the bracket, period. The next thing is the article title, how the economics of dental assisting is impacting your practice. This should just be in plain writing with a capital on the H, and it should finish with a period. The next thing is the name of your journal, Dental Economics. This should be in italics with a capital D and a capital E. It's followed by a comma and then a space, and you should have the number 110 in italics, and then a bracket and the number four close the bracket. So this is the, the volume, 
and the issue. A comma, a space, and then the numbers 12-14 period to represent the page range. Okay. So again, if you need a little bit of practice with that, rewind, go back, or even try it with another journal article that you find in the database. But again, you want to get your head around the pattern. But I'm going to show you a cheat. Okay, So you have learned how to do this manually. I'm going to show you, though, something that's going to change your life. So I'm going to go to the Library College website, and I'm going to go into the databases. So just bear with me as I pull this up here on the screen. So I'll go into my databases. I'll go into EBSCO. So all of this, again, should be familiar to you from doing the um, library research assignment. Go into all databases, sign in. What I'm going to show you, I think, is going to blow your mind. EBSCO host web. OK, I'm just going to select all just to make it simple. OK, and I'm just going to type in the term diabetes and just pull an article at random. Remember, again, though, always clicking full text, OK, to make sure you're getting those articles that are available right away. I'll give it a few seconds here to do its search. I'm getting some ebooks here right away, but what I want to take a look at is an article. So I'm going to go over to the side and click off academic journals. Okay. And let's just pick one here at random. Um, let's find one with a sort of easier title. Okay, let's try this one, Physical Activity Dimensions and its Association with Risk of Diabetes in Middle and Older Aged Chinese People. So I'm going to go into this article, okay? and now imagine that I'm using this article, say, as one of my resources when I'm doing an assignment. So there's my article. Okay. The sneaky little thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go over here on the side, and I'm going to look for the thing that looks like a yellow page. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to pull up a window for me here. And this is where my cheat is. I'm going to just scroll down a little bit, and then I see APA. What this does is it gives me an APA references entry that's computer generated. Okay. Amazing, because now you don't have to do all of the work yourself. You can have the computer do some of the work. It's not perfect, okay? So notice up here, it says, pay special attention to personal names, capitalizations, and dates. Always consult your library resource for the exact formatting and punctuation guidelines. So again, remember, it's a computer doing it, so it doesn't have a human brain. So it doesn't understand all the different things about capitalization that the human brain does, but it at least gives you the raw data. So what I'm going to do to do a bit of a cheat is I'm going to highlight this. Okay, there it is. And I'm going to control C to copy that information. I'm then going to go into my template. Okay, and I'm going to put my cursor where I want to put in this rent entry. And important, I'm going to go to paste, paste special, and I'm going to click unformatted text. Okay, I need to do that because if I don't, I'm going to get all the HTML garbage in there. And I don't want any of that. I just want it plain. Here's my entry. Okay, it's not perfect. I still need to do some formatting with it and some playing around. But at least I don't have to copy down every single word. So here are my authors listed, okay? And this is interesting because it gives you an example of multiple authors. So we have last name, first initial period, comma, last name, comma, first initial period, comma, and so on and so forth until we get to the last one. And then it puts in an ampersand, the end sign, and it gives you the last author's name. There's my year of publication, looks good. Here's the title of my article. Okay, so I know that's my title. Now I got to be careful because, again, it didn't understand the capitalization. So I'm going to need to bring down the capitalization 
on all of the words except for any words within after internal punctuation or any proper names. So I'm taking all of this down, older, aged, whoops, hitting the wrong age. Okay, I'm going to leave the big C on Chinese, but I'm going to take down the P for people. Okay, so now I've formatted my title correctly. The next thing that comes, okay, is the name of my journal. So it's the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. What do I need to do with that? That's right, I need to stick it in italics. So I'm gonna change that over to italics. The next thing that comes up, okay, is my volume and my issue. So remember my volume goes in italics. So I'm gonna change that over. It is missing one thing, the page range. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the entry and I'm gonna take a look and I'm gonna see what my page range is. So I need to actually look at the article for this and I see it's hard with just the little screen open, but let me just go down and I'll see what the page number is. Okay, and looks like it's, see here okay four it says four out of 17 but that's just the total number so i'm going to go back and i'm going to see if i have any page numbers on here and then i actually notice that this journal is not paginated so there are no page numbers so i'm fine just the way it is You'll notice again that my DOI came through. So that's really handy. I didn't have to copy that and, and everything. I was just able to cut and paste. So now my entry is correct. The only thing I need to worry about now is my indentation. So to do that in the template, I'm gonna do something a little bit fancy. I'm gonna hit enter. I don't know if you can hear me hit it. Enter and nothing happens, okay? And that's okay. I'm just telling the computer that I only want this to appear on the second line. So I tab over one, then I put my cursor down, tab over, and the whole thing goes over. So now I have it completely formatted. The one thing I would have to be careful with here though is, yes, that's right, the alphabetization. So this starts with a Z, so it would need to be at the bottom of my references page. But again, you can easily do your alphabetizing simply by cutting and pasting. Okay, so let's go over that one more time. We'll use a different article this time. So I'm in my articles. Let's pick another article on another topic. Um, let's try the word, let's try COVID and see what we end up with. Okay, so I do a search. I'm going to limit to journal articles so that I don't get any magazines or anything like that. So it's just updating my search right now. Okay, so let's pick this particular one. COVID control strategy. Is there any light at the end of the tunnel? So I go into PDF full text. My article is going to pop up in a minute. There it is. Okay. I'm gonna go over to the yellow page, click on that, the box pops up. I'm gonna be careful that I'm getting APA. I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna control C to copy. I'm gonna go into my file. I'm gonna paste, paste special, really important, unformatted text. And there's my basic entry. Okay. Now I've got to go take care of the details, right? So I need to check my capitalization, check where I need to have italics, and check and make sure that all of my numbers and everything are in the correct spot. So I'm going to take a look at it. Looks good so far. Here's the article title, COVID Control Strategy. Then I'm going to make the I big because it's after a dash, internal punctuation. Is there any light at the end of the tunnel? Okay. Here's my journal name, Journal of Family Medicine and Primary Care. I'm gonna put that in italics. Here's my volume number nine. I'm gonna put that in italics. 11 is fine as it is. 
here's a comma. Now there's my page range, 5502-5505, period. My DOI came through nicely. I'm good to go. The only thing I need to do again is my indentation. So I hit enter, nothing happens. I tab, I put my cursor on the next line and tab over and now I'm done. And I've done it beautifully, okay? So remember the cheat, it's good to know, okay? The pattern, because you do have to play around with it, but make sure that you're using that yellow page because it's gonna do a lot of the grunt work for you, okay? So that you don't need to copy. Last thing we're gonna take a look at are websites, okay? So websites, again, um, I have suggested that you're not going to use this very often, okay? If you are using them, again, remember you're going to be judicious and make sure that the website that you're consulting is reliable. If you do, okay, then here's how to format a website. So instead of an individual author, most websites are written by a company or an organization. So you don't actually have a single individual or human being's name. It's the company that puts it out. So I've given an example here. This is from the Minnesota Department of Health. So I put them in as my author, okay, followed by a period. Then I have a bracket. And in the bracket, I'm going to put the date of last update. So what I wanna look for on the website is the date of the website. Some websites, you know, there is there is no standardization, right? Of websites, they all look a bit different. Some will show a date and some won't. If I don't have a date, I'm gonna put in N period, D period to stand for no date. If I do have a date, I'm gonna put it in. And unlike books and articles, not only will I put in the year, but I'll also put in the month and the actual date if I know it. Then a period, okay? Then the name of the website, okay? The name has to be the name of the individual page that you're looking at. So not just the main page, but the, uh, uh, or the, the main name of the website, but the name of the actual page that you're on. So this is workplace wellness, making good health a priority at work. Again, notice the capitalization. So lowercase, except for first words or words after internal punctuation, no italics, okay? And then all I need to include underneath that is the exact web address that will bring me to that specific page, okay? And to do that, it's very easy, okay? All you need to do, use your web browser, click up, where your actual web address is, do a control C, and then do a paste, okay? So that you end up with the exact URL for that particular web website. Okay, that's a lot of information. We're nearly at 35 minutes. So I've gone through quite a bit and you probably spent more time because you've been working through examples and things as well. Take the next few minutes, okay, and work through some more examples. Also, take a look at that website that I told you about, the Owl Purdue, and click through and take a look at some of the APA information that's out there. Okay. Once you've completed that and you feel comfortable with the APA, then it's going to be time to attack our first assignment. And in our first assignment, what I'm gonna be asking you to do is to create a title page for me and a list of references for me. In our next video, I'll go through all of the details for the assignment, okay? But get some practice in, get more comfortable with it. If you have any questions about APA, know that our library under citation, in fact, I'll show you where it is, has lots of good information. You also have the OWL Purdue. So if you want to do a bit of independent work, you can do that. Under library, you click citation and plagiarism and go to APA style here. Okay, and it'll give you some information. You want to look at references list. Okay, gives you some examples here. Okay, so take a look through that, but you're going to get your feet wet with her first assignment. Okay. In our next video, I'll go through all the instructions for that first assignment.
I'll talk to you then.